Hey guys, I think that's everybody um, that's supposed to be in the round. I, let me just do a quick uh, speaker check if that's okay. Uh, Lisa, are you here? Yes, I'm yes. here. Um, Prem? Hey, I'm here. Uh, Cecilia? Here. Um, Alan Chen? Alan, you're here? Hi, so I'm double entered and I just wanted to stop by and say that I'll, I will return later because I have another run. I sh I'm scheduled to, scheduled to go earlier in, if that's all right with the judges. Yeah, that is perfectly fine by me. Okay, thank you. I'll, I will be as I will be back as soon as possible. Good luck in your other round. Good luck, kill it. Thank you. Um, Rebecca, are you here? Here. All right, and then Owen, are you here? Yep, hello. All right, perfect. Give me one second for whatever reason. Um, my AirPods are not being connected uh, can, and I can't really hear anybody properly. So I apologize for that. Can someone quickly speak into their microphone so I can be sure my stuff is working properly? Um, can you hear me? Yeah, hang tight one second, guys. I apologize. You guys hear me now? I can hear you. I can hear you guys through my headphones. Perfect. All right. Um, if the judges are cool with it, um, uh, let's get this round started. I think, Cecilia, you're also double entered or no? Uh, yes, I am. Perfect. So if, I'm, uh, so I'm also double entered. That's Prem? Yeah. Oh, okay. So really quickly, who here is double entered? I got Prem, Cecilia, and Alan. Is anybody else double entered? No. Okay, cool. Um, so Lisa, if it's okay with you, do you mind if we move Prem and Cecilia up to first and second speaker so we can get them to their next round? Yeah, that's perfectly fine with me. All right, uh, judges, it's cool. Um, everybody, are, are y'all good to go? I'm all good. Cool. And then our third judge. Yeah, I'm good. Uh, so our first speaker is going to be. Oh. Okay. Um, and can y'all see and hear me? Okay. Yes, we can. Would you like any time signals? Uh, could I just get a fist of ten if I get there? Let me, yeah, for sure. Awesome. Perfect. Okay. Every gay down in Gayville liked gay marriage a lot. But the Grinch, who lived just east of Gayville, did not. Oh, the Grinch hated happy gays the whole marriage season, please. Don't ask why, nobody quite knows the reason. He growled with his Grinch fingers, nervously drumming. I must find some way to stop gay marriage from coming. To the transphobic cis white men in Congress, yeah? This rainbow flag is just what I need to re-declare the colorful flamboyance from the back of my throat to p -p plant another flag that forgets the death toll of black and brown queers. I can see why the rainbow responds to all the white queer people who voted for Trump. Do your bones not remember the brutal smack against flesh? The raindrop queer boys evaporating from their hospital beds unsure if they should blame the injuries or the illness. I live in fear. 
every day that someone can, can walk through those doors and shoot up my bar. See here, we have a gay bar, a safe space where people like us can reside in peace. See, but Orlando changed that. You know, and the government did nothing. They passed on wishes and whatever, but refused to give my community the help we needed. And now I live in fear. For the Journal of Critical Queer Theory and Sexuality Studies, University of Michigan doctoral student Logan Casey contends that in political spheres, LGBTQ plus individuals, specifically people of color, are constantly turned into talking points, benefiting political actors without them giving us the help we deserve. And moreover, the over-politicization of queer issues has desensitized the public to recognize what queer rights actually are, human rights. From the Stonewall riots, to the Pulse nightclub shooting, to the uptick in anti-queer bills introduced in both state and federal legislatures, it's clear that both historically and presently, queer people of color are not allowed to operate with ease in America. And if by some miracle we manage to survive, pundits and politicians alike make it their goal to strip us of our capability to do so. So with the poetry, the queer agenda, and the rainbow responds to all the white queer people who voted for Trump by Daniel, to all the transphobic cis white men at Pride by Golden, prose, the Grinch that stole gay marriage by Marianne Horton, and the drama, the reason we stand tall by Samir Bakshi. In speech and debate, we're no stranger to turning queer trauma into spectacle and rarely recognize how easy our current political climate has made for us to do so. Because election after election, speech after speech, I constantly have to say, don't politicize me. A program. I must stop gay marriage from coming. But how? I remember the days following Pulse. Journalists were going around to gay bars in the area and asking us how we felt. You know, to be rejected or, or attacked is one thing, but but to be terrorized, words can't even begin to describe it. You know, but the politicians try to find these words and twist them and twist them until there's nothing substantial behind what we have to say. I know what to do, the Grinch laughed in his throat. Then he went to his closet, grabbed his sheet and hood. With this beard and this cross, I look just like our Lord. All I need is scripture, but true scripture is scarce. There was none to be found. Did that stop the old Grinch? Oh no, the Grinch simply said, with no scripture on marriage, I'll fake one instead. It's one man and one woman, the Grinch falsely said. Ain't it like a straight white man to remember all of the colors except Roy G. Biv? Because what does whiteness know about color when I absorb all of its problems? Because how would you know what a rainbow is without my skin refracting you into a cause? They say they like his authenticity when they really mean propensity for genocide. Say, make America great again, but their flag is made in China. Why don't you tuck your transphobia back into your shorts before you get it all mixed up? Now, most people will tell you that the queer agenda doesn't actually exist, but I will tell you something. Only the queerest of queers know. Mm -hmm. The queer agenda actually does exist. Ah! And in fact, I'll tell you my whole entire queer agenda for the rest of this week. <clears throat> Monday, be queer. Tuesday, be queer. Wednesday, be queer. Thursday, be queer. Friday, be queer. Saturday, be extra queer. Sunday, well, you get it. You say y'all don't see color. <laughs> If you did, you'd see the blood on your hands. Y'all want to be brown so bad. You let the stains turn to rust, forgetting that the rainbow has always held its darkest shades close. How oh, your silence 
has always equaled our death. It was quarter past dawn. All the gays are still at bed. All the gays are still a snooze. When the Grinch packed up and fled, poo poo to the gays, he was Grinchishly humming. They're finding out now, no gay marriage is coming. Their mouths will hang open a minute or two. Then all the gays in Gayville will cry boo hoo. Before I have this bar, I am. Uh, I had a boyfriend. It took 13 minutes and 46 seconds for him to be ripped away from me forever. See, he was brutally beaten and killed outside of a gay bar in Atlanta. And I blame myself for not, for not being there to protect him. You know, but at some point we got to recognize, you know, it's not these people committing these hate crimes. You know, it's the people we have in office. See, they do more harm than good for people like me, because when we elect homophobes to office, part of us cripples. We elect these people who do nothing for us, and then they turn us into their ephemeral talking points like we don't matter. So you bet your ass that I've got a queer agenda. It's survival. It's waking up in this queer body every day. It's every time we've heard freak, berry, fag, bitch, or dyke. It's every police baton, cat, call, gun, bullet, and fist that failed to kill us. So tell me that we are Phoenix, rising from the flames of Stonewall and the Black mothers who nurtured our movement with nipple of justice, milk of war. We are not piled to accept a flame. We are sparked that will ignite a war. So tell me right now that we don't matter. Tell me right now that we don't deserve rights. Tell me that right now. Joe Biden is a pebble compared to the boulders of change we need. Hold them accountable, make them help us. Do this for them, do this for us, do this for me. The Grinch looked down at Gayville and he popped his eyes. See, what he there saw was a shocking surprise. Every gay down in Gayville was, was kissing. He hadn't stopped marriage from coming out there with Cain. Somehow or the other, it came. Maybe marriage, he thought doesn't come from the courts, maybe marriage comes right from the heart. And in Gayville, they say, the Grinch's small brain grew three sizes that day. And the minute his life didn't feel quite so like a drag, <coughs> he himself hung <coughs> the gay rainbow flag. Great job, great job, great job. May I be um, excused for my next round? Yeah, I'm sorry I didn't give you your time signals. You were under time. Um, I was oh. just, like, stuck watching. That's all good. Don't worry. <laughs> all right, cool. Thank you um, for judging, Joe. Thank Let's you. Of course, yeah. um, and judges, the time on that was 10.18. And for the following competitors, I promise I'm going to do a better job with time signals aside for that one. Um, all right. And then I think Cecilia, right? You're going to be next. You're also double honored. Yes. And then can you hear me all right? I can hear you perfectly fine. Cecilia, would you like any time signals? I'm going to give them the uh, time, I promise. If possible, could I get a fist at 10? Fist at 10. Got it. I'm going to make sure I do it. Whenever you're ready. 
Sounds good. Hi, I'm going to need to speak to a manager. Are you sick and tired of not getting your way whenever you want? Have you been accused of saying something racist and don't know how to shift focus? Ding. Introducing Entitled White Women's Tears, the revolutionary new solution that will keep you looking your victimist. Cold foam blonde iced cappuccino? No? Okay, no, I've tried the other ones too, but not all coffee shops have the cold foam. <gasps> yeah, yeah, it's the subtle notes of maple and brown sugar. It's like every sip is a fiesta on my tongue. <laughs> Remake, yeah. <laughs> so I was waiting in line for my cappuccino when I see this black boy enters a grocery store. He whistles. And that whistle was heard around the world. In 1955, Carolyn Bryant justifies Emmett Till's death by claiming harassment. 60 years later, his bones still lay in a casket. These white women know what they're doing. Stop recording me. Stop recording me. You know what? I'm going to call 911 and tell them that there is an African-American man threatening my life. You know, white women are the only ones who can be murderers and still faultless. Out of all the quality content this last year has provided, nothing quite compares to the Karen trope. Well, for those who don't know, the Karen moniker is used to signify white women acting entitled, throwing unnecessary fits, and claiming that masks are an infringement on their rights. However, Dr. Jesse Daniels argues that the Karen ideology stems from the weaponization of white womanhood or the use of privilege as a shield to deflect blame. In 2020, Amy Cooper called the police on a black man, insisting on the phone that her life was being threatened. This maneuver dates back to the Jim Crow era, the same narrative involving the death of Emmett Till. And this ideology continues to threaten black lives today. So with the prose cold foam, the drama entitled White Women's Tears, the poem White Lie in articles from CNN, NPR, and the New York Times, keeping up with the Karens a program. But don't take it from us. Listen to our satisfied customers. <laughs> I used to exhibit socially acceptable behavior, but now thanks to entitled white women's tears, I see my time is more valuable than everyone else's. <laughs> So I cut in line and abuse service staff whenever I want, even when I'm the one who's made the mistake. <laughs> Karen originates from the term Miss Anne from the Jim Crow periods. Now, African Americans use this term as code to refer to unreasonable white women. And while this archetype has also been called Permit Patty or Barbecue Becky, Karen is stuck. Now, I offer a case study which identifies how white women manifest certain defense modes. You know what? I'm going to take a picture and call 911 and tell them that there is an African American man threatening my life. 
when responding officials arrived. Let's see. Ah, Miss Cooper admitted that the male had not tried to assault or come into contact with her. This weaponization of 911 by white women is used to invoke the power and force of police who they are fully aware are hostile to black men. 60 years later, Carolyn Bryan confesses to being a liar. As if we didn't already know. As she painted her nails with Amit Teal's blood. Only knows innocence by the sound of the neck snapping. <laughs> Only knows accountability as a distant cousin. Yes, officer. I'll be right back. Well, I was waiting in line for my cappuccino when I see this man sitting alone at a table. And well, I can't help but notice that he doesn't have a drink in front of him. These white women know what they're doing. A Karen now roams restaurants and stores, often without a mask in the coronavirus era. But even when Karens are not invoking violence upon black and brown people themselves, they know that they can enlist others, especially the police, to do it for them. Our specially formulated white women's tears isn't sourced from nasty places like grief, oppression, or righteous anger. No, no, we bottle our entitled white women's tears from coffee. And so I asked the barista if the man had ordered anything. And well, she said he hadn't. And that just sent my alarms buzzing because well, I watch a lot of law and order, you know. So after I got my cappuccino, there's an African-American man threatening my life. Oh, oh, there, there, there's an African-American man threatening my life. <laughs> no, no, listen, there, 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 there's an African-American man, these white women know precisely what they are doing. They are using their white femininity as an instrument of terror against black men. And I know what it looks like. I really do, but it's not because he's, well, you know, and the family that lives across from me, they're African-American and I think they're just lovely. I voted for Hillary Clinton, you know, so that's why I just wanted to call you. There's an African-American man threatening my life. <laughs> no, 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 there's an African-American man threatening my life. There's an African-American man threatening my life. <laughs> Is that everything you need, officer? I, I mean, I just want to help. I'm just trying to be Carolyn Bryant. Is alive and well. White women are the only ones who can be murderers and still faultless. The black man yesterday was shattered by her screams. A black man today it went to pieces by the side of her. It is too late. Carol and Brian murdered Emmett Till. The black man is always broken to her touch. But isn't that like a white woman? To point a finger with blood on her hand, to put a child in a casket and still be seen as victim, there are enough histories of Black deaths in this country. Following the wake of white women's displeasure to make the rise of the Karen a worrisome prospect. Entitled White Women's Tears by women for women. Never let someone make you accountable for your bad behavior ever 
again. Great job, great job, great job. Um, and then your time was nine minutes and 59 seconds. I was ready, I was ready to give you the fifth attempt. Um, cool. All right, and good can luck I on your next time? round. Yeah, heck yeah. Thanks. Good luck in your next round. Thank you. Okay. Um, and then whenever the other judges are good, just go ahead and let me know and we'll start back from the top. I'm all good. Cool. Yeah, we're ready to one more judge and then we are good. I'm good. Perfect. All right. So Lisa, you are going to be our next speaker. We're going to start back from the top. Perfect. Uh, Lisa, would you like any time signals from me? No, thank you. No, nope. perfect. Cool, cool, cool. Um, all right, Lisa, whenever you are ready, we are good to go. Perfect. Stars shining bright above you. Night breezes seem to whisper, I love you. Birds singing in the sycamore tree. Dream a little dream of me. Say nighty night and kiss me. Just hold me tight and tell me you'll miss me. While I'm alone in Blue as can be. Dream a little. Dream a little dream of me. Mom used to love that song. Always sang it while she was planting. You know, there is something about being black in America. That has made motherhood? Well, sound like more. Like one morning I could wake up and see my daughter as a repeat of last week's story. She was a flower. She held herself high, strong, bright, and filled with innocence. But someone came along. So I pull over a guy who's driving, and he's probably stoned with his kids in the car. So I asked him to show me his hands. And he does, of course. But then he tells me he has a legally owned gun in his car. Now why he tell me that? Now I remember when my mama gave me the test about the talk. Racism is gonna be a huge part of your life, you understand me? You only have one life. So when the police officer asks you a question, what you doing? I'm gonna keep my hands visible and say yes sir or no sir. And you have to remember babe. Because when the police want what they want, they would do anything. Do you hear me? Mm hmm Anything. They would lie on us, they would lock us up, and they will. They will kill us. And I ain't gonna let them kill my daughter. So even if it feels like it's not fair, I need you to remember this so that you don't accidentally get hurt. So please, babe. Wherever you go, make it home. Alive. After the killing of her father, seven-year-old Gianna Floyd has spoken out multiple times, expressing that her father, George Floyd, has changed the world. While police killings of Black Americans impact the entire community, it's the children who are often forgotten. Let it be known that the Black children of America are watching watching people of the same skin color die for buying a bag of skills, going on a jog, failing to signal a left turn, reaching for their wallet, and for merely using a $20 bill. And it's this ignorance of forgetting our black children that has caused them to bear the burden of their community alone. A study done from the Journal of Adolescent Health shows that black children have higher rates of symptoms of depression, 
and post-traumatic stress disorder, which is linked to the exposure of police killings. So through the poems, What Shall I Tell My Children Who Are Black by Bailey Chavanel and Wilton Faber Me Wills, the prose Betrayal in Black Mark Bello, the drama When They See Us by Ilu DuVernay and Seriously Fighter by Kevin Hart, and the articles from the UTM, USA Today, CNN, Washington Post, MappingPoliceViolence.org, WBUR, BBC, and The Verge. Make it home alive, a program, because my first instinct when my dad leaves my house should not be to turn on the news. He took away the flower sunlight. <laughs> he uprooted the flower. <laughs> Put her in a dark corner. She wilted, but her leaves turned brown. Scores of black and brown families throughout the United States are struggling through the delicate but brutal balancing act of protecting our children's innocence while also educating them on the realities of what it means to be black in this country. My mama gave me some of the best memories. I remember I was at school playing with one of the white kids. Hey, Tommy, let's go play. And then little Tommy boy had the audacity to say I drank too much chocolate milk. And that's why I was brown. So I asked my mom, she said, Girl, you know damn well you're not black because it's chocolate milk. <laughs> Hold up. You don't even like me. So then I asked the driver's license registration and he started to reach down. And I remembered he had a gun. But I did what I had to do. The video footage taking that protest against police brutality over the past few months means images of cops attacking civilians are never far away. And it can mean real damage to the mental health of the viewers specifically to the black children watching and repeatedly seeing these images of violence. This is traumatic. Her petals fell into a never ending darkness. Everyone asked where the flower was. What happened to the flower? They tried to help her from the corner, but they told her this wasn't her. Okay, I may have shot the guy, but I feel really bad. But I should have lost my job. And you know what? It wasn't even my fault. He shouldn't have reached down. The kids are watching. When Philando Castile, a 32-year-old black man, was shot and killed, he was sitting in the front seat of his car, while his girlfriend's daughter, a four-year-old, sat in the back. Our kids are watching, mommy. The darkest people get shooted and killed, and, and sometimes a little bit louder ones, too. When the flower wasn't as white and vibrant as before, it began to feel a change. No, the flower would never be the same because brown flowers don't hold the same innocence as those white. What name is suspicious of the person? I mean, he had his kids in the car. Yes, he was black, but what does it have to do with? What did I do? Put him up! I remember when mama and I were driving. Just told me tight and tell me you'll miss me while I'm alone and blue as can be. I remember the lights. I remember the sounds of cars passing by and kids in the cars pointing back at mine. I remember the three knocks on the driver's side window. I remember the sound of his voice. And I remember my mama's face. Please, please don't do this. My kids in the car, just please don't do this. Baby, it will be okay. It will be okay. Just remember what I told you. Please, mama! What'd you do to my mama? You know, I think about that day a lot. 
Not a second goes by where I don't think about that day. And you know, I used to think about how she used to tell me to make it home alive. But the one day, she... the cops suspended with pay. The cops suspended with pay. With pay, 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 my mama is dead and I'm killing it's a pay vacation because there is something about being black in America that shows there is no true protection when you look like this. And I'm tired. I am so tired. We are in 2021 and black parents are still giving the talk a talk that entails telling your children that the very people supposed to help them may kill them. The flower was as empty inside as it was outside. She was just another weed to add to his list. But as the flower's petals grew back in a shade darker than before, she realized she was more stronger and beautiful than ever. Inside and out, she was different. She knows that there is strength inside. Okay, I'm gonna tell you something my mom used to tell me, all right? So when the police officer asks you a question, do you know what to do? No? Okay, you keep your hands visible and you say yes, sir, or no, sir. Okay? You understand me? Okay. You have to remember, babe, because when the police want what they want, they would do anything. Do you hear me? Mm -hmm. Anything. They will lie on us. They will lock us up and they will kill us. And I ain't gonna let them kill my daughter. So even if it feels like it's not fair, I need you to remember this so that you don't accidentally get hurt. So please, babe, wherever you go, make it home. Alive. Great job, Lisa. Great job, Lisa and the judges. Um, that time was 10 minutes and 46 seconds. Awesome. Yeah, no, great job. Um, I'm going to let the judges take a couple minutes to finish up their notes. Um, and then when you guys are all good to go, just let me know and we will move on to our next speaker. I'm all good. Wonderful, thank you. Whenever y'all are ready. Great, now are, is Alan back yet or no? No, it does not look like it. Okay, cool, Rebecca, you are gonna be our next speaker. Hi, can you see me and hear me all right? Yes, I can. Everybody else could, all the other judges can see me correctly. Awesome. Perfectly. Perfect. Uh, Rebecca, would you like any time signals? No, thank you. Perfect. Whenever you are ready. When I was 14, people called Asians the model minority. We're associated with being smart and generally overachieving. We're all upper middle class to make lots of money in big corporations. <laughs> we are the model minority. When I was a graduate student in poetry, I decided that writing about my Asian identity was juvenile after a classmate ripped on my first collection. He compared me to Lee Young. Lee. Not only do we look alike, we also write alike. Aww. 
Then he declared that the poetry world would be better off if all mediocre minority poets, like myself, were exterminated. More than 2,300 Asian Americans have reported biased incidents as of July 15th. One third of all people have witnessed someone blaming Asians for the pandemic. Still, Asian Americans and Pacific Islanders frequently underreport hate crimes because they're afraid of being seen as overly sensitive. Many help normalize anti-Asian xenophobia by using terms like model minority. But that barely tells you anything about me. On my first day of sophomore year, my history teacher looked us all in the eye and said, I want scholars, not wallflowers. And so as a proud member of speech and debate, I sat there and I thought, well, I'm screwed. Throughout my entire life, I've been told that being quiet is good. However, when I scroll through social media and I see dozens of pictures of Asian Americans who've been assaulted for simply looking Chinese during a pandemic, or when my friends and I are looking for a speech piece written by and about Asian Americans and we have to fight over the same book because there's simply nothing else out there, I wonder, where are the Asian American voices? And so through the poem, Stereotypically Asian by Candace Chung, The Prairie's Minor Feelings and Asian American Reckoning by Kathy Park Hong, and articles from NPR, The New York Times, The Harvard Business Publishing, Independent and Slate, spoken by an Asian American, a program. Because it's not enough to stay quiet. The 1965 immigration ban is how this whole model minority quackery began. Back then, the US government only let in the most educated and highly trained Asians in. And then, mm hmm, and then they took all the credit for their success. See, anyone can live the American dream, they would say about a doctor who came into the country already a doctor. And no, there's no discrimination as long as you're compliant and hard working. When I was 15, people called Asians the model minority. I'm probably a stellar example of the model minority. I do well in school and I'm even pursuing computer science. And so supposedly I will land a six figure job, right? out of college. The model minority stereotypes entire demographic as hardworking, educated, and successful. But many have pointed out that the racial violence against Asian Americans often goes overlooked because of the persistent stereotypes about the community. There's an assumption that Asian Americans have class privilege, that they have high socioeconomic success and education, and that any discrimination doesn't really happen. When I was 16, people called Asians the model minority. We're associated with being smart and generally overachieving. We're all upper middle class to make lots of money in big corporations. <laughs> we... Oh. Um. <clears throat> We're heterosexual, complacent, and apolitical. We have small eyes, faces that white men sometimes find attractive. But we're the model minority. Justin Choi, a registered nurse at Columbia University, was on his way home when he was approached by a man. Hey, you're Chinese, right? Choi responded that he was Chinese American. And the man? 
The man told Choi that he should go back to his country, citing the outbreak as another example of all those sicknesses spread by chinks. A year ago, I read from this book at a small gallery in New York City. Afterwards, a white man with a beard and tattoos sauntered up to me. My racial awareness mediator is like so smart. He told me that like minorities can't be racist against each other. Um, that's bull. Are you calling my racial awareness mediator a liar? No, he could just be misinformed. Well, he also told me that Asians are next in line to be white. What do you think about that? When I was 17, people still called Asians the model minority, but Many of us are actually dirt poor. I don't want to speak to you. You're Chinese. Please get me someone else to work with. But there is a culture of ever increasing stress, pressure, and overworking. Next time, don't bring your diseases back from your country. But we aren't represented in the government, you chink. All of you have the Chinese virus. But we are the model minority. But you are next in line to be white. But we are the model. Noel Quintana was on his way to work when a man walked by and... <gasps> me or something but then I saw the faces of the people around me and I saw my hand was bloody a stranger had just cut my face from ear to ear And I thought I was gonna die. And so I asked for someone to please help me. No one came. No one helped. No one even knew me. No one called 911 or alerted the train conductor. I thought I was dying and no one helped me. All because, because, because we are the model minority. But many of us are also dirt poor. And many of us aren't represented in the government. We have been cowed by the lie that we have it so good. And so we keep our heads down and work hard, believing that our diligence will bring us dignity. But our diligence will only make us disappear. The lie is so insidious that even now as I write, I'm shattered by doubt that I didn't have it bad compared to the others. But racial trauma is not a competitive sport. And so when I hear the term, Asians are next in line to be white, I replace white with disappear. Asians are next in line to disappear. Great job, great job, great job. And then the time on that judges was 10 minutes and 10 seconds. Um, and then I'm gonna give the judges some time to finish up their notes. And then whenever they're done, just let me know. And then we will go on to our next speaker.
Ready whenever y'all are. I'm all good as well. Perfect, perfect, perfect. All right, so Alan, we got you back, right? Yes, I am here. Do you still need a little bit more time after that round, or are you good to go? Uh, I'm good to go. All right, perfect, my man. You're going to be up next. Okay, awesome. Uh, uh, can uh, everyone... Sorry, continue. I apologize. Uh, can everyone hear and see me all right? Yes. Okay, awesome. Yep. Um, do you want any time signals? No, thank you. I'm fine. No? Cool, perfect. Yeah, whenever you're ready. Okay, awesome. Thank you. And oysters' pearls are formed from foreign parasites that have breached the boundaries of its shell. On her 16th birthday, I go into my daughter's bedroom and I see her first place voyage ribbons, the picture of us at Disney World. You know, Katie is a daddy's girl. <laughs> no, by default. So that makes me not only father, but food supervisor, activities director, and counselor all at once. So I'm thrown into bake sales, critiquing ballet recitals, and, and last summer, it was shopping for a bra. Oh, Katie, look at this one. It looks like it'll provide some uh, support. No? Okay. Yeah, so uh, sometimes it got kind of awkward, but... The best memories in my life come from this period that I remember as the bachelor days. I was six and I was moving here with my dad. And it was just us two, cause my mom had just passed away. So my dad decided to protect itself from danger. The oyster cocoons, the foreign substance and calcium until the very thing that was trying to destroy it makes it most beautiful. Dear Dad, when most people think about single parents, their minds jump to single mothers. But to my single dad, just know that you are not forgotten. Author Janine Shepard once noted that when we share our stories, it opens up our hearts for other people to share their stories. And it gives us a sense that we are not alone on this journey. After four years in the speech and debate community, I have heard so many stories that have helped me learn, laugh, and live. So, in the final tournament of my career, I present this performance, a reflection of my own life, in the hopes that it will touch maybe one person. To the pros, Daddy's Little Girl by Jason Sheets. The poetry, My Father is an Oyster by Clint Smith. The Dramas Against the Wind by C.J. Hunt, Kramer vs. Kramer by Robert Benton, Love Actually by Richard Curtis, and Sleepless in Seattle by Nora Ephron, and Letters from the Odyssey. Not a program, but appreciation for my dad. Because after my mom passed away, he made sure that my brother and I could lead the happiest lives possible. So this is for him. So my dad and I lived in this cramped apartment like like 22 year olds you I mean, know furniture no cookware and and the best part was we could eat cereal whenever we wanted to oh, how about some uh, some breakfast is is mommy coming back uh, why don't i make us some uh, french toast really sure sure <laughs> didn't i ever tell you french toast was my specialty you forgot the milk. Uh, yeah. When my daughter Katie came home from school sick, I scheduled an appointment with the doctor. And she said, your daughter has leukemia. And my father is an oyster who was raised by a coral reef of a mother who taught him that when the waves of the world try to wear you down, it's okay because we are all weathered. But Dad, no matter how tired you were, 
you still managed to do whatever you had to do for me. Like when Katie tells me she wants to go to the school dance, well, I hesitate. I mean, she's all like, oh, come on, dad. I even got a date. You'd like him. Trust me, if a prepubescent teen is targeted my daughter for his hormonal attacks, I don't like him. But I have to admire his good taste. So I ask, can I chaperone? Dinner! I'm not hungry. Is it mom being gone? You really want to know? Okay. I know I should be thinking about mom all the time, and, and I am. But the truth is, I'm in love. Well, I'm relieved that at the school dance, all of the couples gather at the top of the staircase and come down to the dance floor. And suddenly, I see Katie. And the dress looks great, but she's not wearing her wig. And beaming like a, a choir girl, my bald little girl comes down the stairs and says, I want them to like me for who I am. And my father is an oyster who clasps down tightly on the things he loves the most. His family and treatments come and treatments go. And Katie gets a little bit sicker. So hospital stays come and go too. And then one day, the nurse informs me that, that she slipped into a coma. Katie, come on. Katie, come on. Katie. And six hours later, Katie passed away. Three weeks shy of her 16th birthday. And that, as a single parent, you must have felt at times that you're your whole world was crumbling down around you, but you still held it together for me, even when you were hurting. Dad, I had a nightmare about mom, and I miss her, and I think I was starting to forget her. It's okay, it's okay, it's okay. You know why? Because she's here. And because I have you. And as long as I have you, <clears throat> I have your mama. And when I look back on that time, I'm struck by the dichotomy between what I remember as these, these golden bachelor days and, and what was happening. Because if an oyster can turn a parasite into a pearl, then it is no surprise that my father can turn our circumstances into these golden bachelor days. And I think about that summer. And I wonder if he was scared. I wonder how he knew what to do when everything started falling apart. I wonder where in our little apartment he would go to cry so that I couldn't see him. And I wonder how my father was able to turn what should have been the most devastating period of my life to what I remember as my best and he has a calcium encrusted heart cradled in his chest. There's scars worn from waves that have tried to erode him up this world. So I know my father is an oyster. And I pray that when he is pulled from this ocean, that those who live above the surface see the brilliance of his pearls, because I do. Because I do. And next to a wig, I spot this, this journal I've never seen before. And in it, a note says, 
Thank you, Dad. For not only being the greatest father in the world, but for also taking on the role of mom at times. <laughs> for being the only dad to show up at every school event. <laughs> for loving me, even when I'm at my worst. <laughs> and the most important thing, <laughs> for being you. <laughs> so now that I'm a, uh, a real bachelor now, I often ask myself what kind of man I might become. And then I realize, I already know. Great, great job, Alan. Super great job. Your time on that one, judges, was 10 minutes and nine seconds. And then I will give you some time to finish up those comments. And then one of you guys are ready. Just let me know. I'm ready. And whenever y'all are ready to move on. Perfect. And then our final speaker of the evening is going to be Owen. Hello. Just to check, am I in frame? Can you hear me? Indeed you are. And indeed I can. Awesome. All right, Owen, a uh, question for you. Would you like any time signals? Uh, no, thank you. No? Perfect. Um, all right. Whenever you are ready, my man. Awesome. There are many colors of the rainbow, each one different from the rest. A color on its own is unique and special, and just like the colors of the rainbow, people are unique in their own special way. Yes, honey, shablam, yeah, this. Rainbow flag is just what I needed to redeclare my flamboyance that you swallowed to the back of your throat. I can see why this is your favorite holiday. The time you get to step outside your picket fence bodies. Remind yourself that you were once so pressed. <laughs> Marginalized, get to shake your ass to plant another flag. Huh. And ain't it like us to remember all the colors? But black, white, gay, privilege. The fact of the matter is that queerness is intersectional. As an out gay man, I've been shot at with a BB gun by frat boys in college and had a carload of guys call me fag as I minded my own business walking down the street. But I'm a white gay man and events of the past year have taught me that I don't get a free pass. June 28th, 1969, the Stonewall Lane experiences yet another anti-LGBTQ police raid. However, this time patrons riot, sparking the gay rights movement. Flash forward 50 years, America witnesses an 86% increase of violent homicides against the LGBTQ plus community in just one year. And according to the National Coalition of Anti-Violence Programs, of those homicides, 71% of victims are people of color. But unfortunately, it appears that my community, specifically cisgender gay white men, have forgotten that the equal rights we enjoy today, such as marriage equality and protection against workplace discrimination, are because of Black and Latinx drag queens and trans women 
who decided to fight back all those years ago and who continue to do so today. The poetry. To the transphobic cis white gay men at Pride by Golden, white boy privilege by Royce Mann, recognizing white privilege by Joanne Broadfield, and until the act by Andrea Gibson, the prose. The colors of the rainbow by Jennifer Mormolinos, and confronting my own white privilege by Mark Evanchinsky, an article from Vice Them, the Courier Journal, and the Huffington Post. Completing the rainbow. Because it's time that gay white men like myself recognize our privilege, own up to our role in systemic racism, and become better allies in the fight for equality. Let's start with the epicenter of problematic behaviors. Ah! The dating app profile. Whether you're looking for whoop, Mr. Right or whoop, Mr. Right now, <laughs> a lot of you just whoop, mm, not into chopsticks or curry. <gasps> More to vanilla and spice than chocolate and rice. Oh, I just like what I like. <laughs> Would you say that I'm sexist? Because I don't like women? <clears throat> okay, let's put aside the fact that broadcasting your distaste for an entire race is racist AF and just challenge the reasoning. Yes, people like what they like, but sometimes the things that people like are racist. Like, I don't know, preferring one race. That became clear to me when I thought back to my own high school days of being bullied for being gay. Yeah, it was rough, but I didn't have it nearly as bad as Randall. He was African-American and relentlessly teased. I had started life in the top of the ladder where the plains overhead mean tropical vacations. We're looking up is what we do to feel hopeful. While you were born on the first rung, would I change places with you? Would I? Probably not. So right about now, I'm going to assume that you are rolling your eyes at me. That's fine. Here's an example of gay white privilege. The 2015 movie Stonewall, the historical drama that would have us believe that a white gay boy from Indiana threw the first brick during the police raid that sparked the rebellion that started the modern day gay rights movement. No, black and Latinx drag queens and trans women like Marsha P. Johnson, Sylvia Rivera and Miss Major started the movement. There is one day that I will never forget. Gym class was over and a group of six or seven boys all randle into the showers and <laughs> Begin beating him mercilessly. I sat on a bench on the other side of the stall. Not daring to move or call any attention to myself. Randall didn't scream. But I heard him crying as the as the punches kept coming. I left as soon as I could. But it's about not turning away learning about internalized oppressions, 
It's about being tender at the intersection of race and class. It's about accepting some responsibility to respond in new ways because it was no accident that the other boys chose Randall to beat that day. The only thing that separated me from Randall was that I was white. What I experienced that day was white privilege. It's about doing the seemingly impossible to help deinstitutionalize, deconstruct, deorganize. The organized way power continues to show up in corporate jails, dysfunctioning schools, destructive employment practices, in methodologies that blame cultures, uphold hierarchy, reward the top. It's about knowing that we can all do something in our lives, make room for more as we go step by step together to build So what can we do? For gay white men, it means not only marching to support LGBT rights, but for black lives matter too. It means showing up and listening. It means not using our sense of victimization to create equivalency and to excuse ourselves from taking responsibility. We have seen that just like a rainbow, we are both unique and similar in our own special ways. Let's celebrate your differences, appreciate our uniqueness. Let's come together and build a rainbow. Thank you. Great job. Um, the time on that one was going to be 10 minutes and eight seconds, judges. Guys, I want to say great round. I like thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed myself. Um, congratulations on making it to quarters and best of luck to you guys um, in the future. Thank you so much. Have a good one. Thank you. Have a nice day. Great job, guys. Congratulations. Thank, Thank you for judging. Great job. Thank y'all. Thank you, bye. Do you guys need any times? Um, I don't know if, I, if you guys missed any of them. I think I got them all. Thank you so much for timing. <laughs> yes, thank you very much for keeping time. Take care, have a good one. Have a good thank one. Talk to you. Bye.